Hello everyone, welcome back for another lesson. In this lesson we will be talking about properties of material. So the first property is something that is brittle. So something that's brittle is something that can be broken into uh, smaller pieces with either a little, bit of, a little bit of force or a lot of force, it depends on the material, but it's something that can be desirable. Here I'm giving you the example of chalk that we use on a chalkboard. So we want it to produce powder because we want to be able to write with it. If it was too hard, we could not write with it and it would create all kinds of sounds that would really be undesirable. So that is something that is brittle. Next we have malleability. So malleability allows a material to be bent and reshaped or flattened without breaking. So if you take a plastic ruler and you bend it, it won't necessarily break unless of course you apply too much force. But if you apply a, a normal force, it, it, would, it would just bend and go back to its original shape afterwards. Same thing with a hockey stick. When you hit a puck, when you do a slap shot, the hockey stick will bend slightly, but then it will go back to its original shape. Same thing with this bridge over here. So this, as you can tell, is an old picture because it's in black and white. They had uh, built a bridge in Tacoma and uh, they did not take the winds into consideration when they built the bridge. So the engineers didn't think of that and the winds were so strong at one point that the bridge started swaying and eventually broke. So you can see the man here trying to uh, run away um, uh, before the, the bridge collapses. So that's malleability. Then we have ductility. That allows a material to be stretched without breaking it. And if, if you stop stretching it, well, it will retain that new shape. So an example would be copper. So copper we stretch to make into uh, electrical wires. Next we have elasticity, which allows a material to be stretched and it would return to its previous shape. So in this case, it does go back to its its original shape. So a spring or an elastic, so rubber, would be uh, examples of that. Hardness, that's a property that materials have when they resist dents, scratches, and abrasions. So they are so hard that you can virtually not, um, I don't want to use the word break, really scratch them would be the proper uh, term. So marble is an example of that. It's extremely hard. So even if you drop some, something on it, you will not uh, make a, a little dent in it. You will not scratch it. It will remain perfect. Resilience, that's the ability to resist shock without breaking. So if you hit on a nail with a hammer, obviously you're using a lot of strength or some strength anyways, the hammer or, nor the nail will break. So they are very resilient. We use um, that property or that quality also when we talk about people that uh, will face adversity but will will just you know, pick themselves up and keep pushing through. They are very resilient. Uh, tenacity would be another word that we would use for those people. So people who are resilient or materials that are resilient, well, they resist shock without breaking. You can't break people or you can't break the object very easily. Then we have stiffness. So that's the ability to retain the shape even if there's a constraint on the object. So if you put a force on the object, so here there's a lot of cars and trucks that pass through uh, the Champlain Bridge. Um, it doesn't collapse, obviously. Uh, it's very, very strong. So it's very stiff. The shape doesn't change in spite of the constraints, in spite of the, the weight of all these trucks and cars that pass on it. Examples would be steel or cement, which we use in construction for that very reason. They are stiff. They retain their shape. They're not going to break apart. They're not going to change shape. Buildings will not start um, bending sideways and or, or, or breaking apart. Then we have permeability. That's when a material absorbs a fluid or allows a substance to pass through it. So we have two examples here. On the left hand side we have soil. So when it rains the water trickles through the soil. So the soil is permeable. And we also have on the right side blood vessels. Blood vessels we know allow for certain substances to pass through them to go uh, to get toward their, their, the cells which are the, um, 
uh, the end of their journey maybe. Or back and forth. The cells that uh, perform cellular respiration will produce carbon dioxide. That carbon dioxide then ends up in the blood vessels so it can eventually be expelled through the lungs. So they are permeable both ways, the blood vessels, um, that is. Something that is not permeable would be called impermeable. So that's permeability. Then we have resistance to corrosion. So when something corrodes, it rusts. So in this case, it's the ability of a metal to resist corrosion. So they don't react with an oxidant. Most often it's oxygen. And uh, when a metal reacts with an oxidant, it produces an oxide. We call it commonly rust. So rust is the more chemically form of uh, the co more chemically stable, sorry, form of a metal. So some metals will rust to become more chemically stable. This is not necessarily something that we want because uh, it implies that the the metal then uh, changes. Uh, we know that when there's a chemical reaction, the original substance doesn't exist anymore. It becomes something else. And rust is not as hard and durable and uh, as the original metal. So we don't want that. Although it's more chemically stable from the metal standpoint, that's not something that we want. So something that is resistant to corrosion will not react with oxygen to create an oxide. So it will not rust. Then we have electrical conductivity. So obviously the substance, the metal is able to conduct electricity. Copper, as we know, is the best conductor of electricity. And lastly, we have thermal conductivity. So that's when a material can conduct heat. If you think of pots and pans, which are made of metals or sometimes ceramic or glass, those substances will allow for heat to pass through them and they will transfer that heat to the food that we're trying to cook or bake. So that is thermal conductivity. It allows for heat to pass through them. They conduct heat. And that's it for uh, properties of materials. So if you have any questions, um, please seek my help as usual. And otherwise, I'll see you around for your next lesson. And until then, take care.